Hi, MYC community. Here we are again at 4.30 p.m. on a Sunday at my piano in my living room. I'm Mike Ross, Artistic Director of Madison Youth Choirs. What follows will give you a glimpse into what was to be, but hopefully is also a reminder about what really was. For MYC, our rehearsal process of learning, creating community, asking questions, and becoming expert noticers is always our focus. Although some of our final rehearsals and our opportunity to present this music to the public was denied to us, that does not take away any of the amazing moments we had during our rehearsals this season. This afternoon, hindsight truly is 2020. If we had known at our last rehearsal that it would prove to be our last time together in person this season, how would it have changed things? I encourage you to listen and think back to those amazing moments from this semester as we share this moment together virtually. Each of our conductors has chosen a song from our study to share a few thoughts about, and each has chosen a recording, mostly not of our current NYC singers, with one exception, so our whole community can have a chance to hear the music we were learning about. NYC you soon! So one of the pieces that Conjoya was studying as part of our hindsight journey this semester is a piece called Impart. Uh, it's composed by contemporary composer Stephen Paulus, who died just a few years ago, I believe in 2014. And it takes a text by Albert Schweitzer. And Albert Schweitzer was, wow, uh, a theologian, an organist, a writer, a humanitarian, a philosopher, a physician, um, and also earned a Nobel Peace Prize um, in 1952. And the text goes like this. Impart as much as you can of your spiritual being to those who are on the road with you. And accept as something precious what comes back to you from them. And what we did each week with this text was sort of dig a little bit deeper. We spent the whole semester really mining the text for any sort of surface meaning, but also deeper meanings that, uh, that resonated really differently with each singer. So every week we would give a, a writing prompt. Every singer had a, a note card and would answer these questions. Sometimes we would just summarize the text in a word or two. Um, we asked to give an example of hindsight in your life and what you may have learned from it. Um, and something that someone has imparted to you and how it was meaningful. So every week we had different singers share out their responses um, and their reactions to this text as it related to these prompts and vice versa. Um, and it really, every week we just deepened our discussion and our bonds as an ensemble through this really rich text and this beautiful piece. Indeed, enjoy. Thank you. 
As you might know, our boy choirs are all named after British composers. Our choir Purcell is named after the composer Henry Purcell. It's pretty hard to find Henry Purcell music that we can sing in our choir Purcell because he didn't really write music for children's choirs. He wrote music for adult professional choirs. Or in this case, with Watchman's Catch, it would have been sung by a group of people coming over as a, a party song um, to entertain themselves. Maybe even used if they were under quarantine to entertain themselves during quarantine instead of watching Netflix. It's really fun now, just as it was hundreds of years ago, to sing in three parts and hear how those parts line up. We were just at the point in Purcell where we were putting two parts together and I was singing that third part. It would have been amazing to hear the boy sing all three parts in the concert. That's going to have to wait till next year, but for now, listen to this past recording. The Coraliers have been learning the beautiful Pie Jesu from the Foray Requiem. We learned that a requiem is music to remember a lost loved one and discuss the importance of reflecting on all the people who positively impact our lives and walk life's journey with us. The famous Pie Jesu movement is a personal message of hope and we considered the question, how does the music create a sense of hopefulness? One expert noticer enjoys the sense of calm that the music creates and went on to discover that the final statement of Sempiternam Requiem, eternal rest, is different than all of the others. It's sung in steady quarter notes instead of using the dotted rhythm motif and instead of going down, it ends in a gentle upward motion, symbolizing ascension into eternal life. This recording is a solo performance by one of the world's great boy sopranos, and we hope the music brings you a sense of comfort, hope, and peace.
Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his heart a spells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Randall Thompson's setting of this beloved Robert Frost poem is part of a suite called Frostiana. This setting contrasts the constant slow falling motion of the piano, the falling snow, with a more insistent forward iambic rhythm of the voices. The piece is occasionally interrupted by some unexpected harmonic turns in the piano. Can you imagine the scene? Encountering such a stark scene and taking the time to think about what is next before moving on seems appropriate right now. And miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Mm -hmm. 